I'm very happy that I'm able to introduce uh, Michelle Steingart. So she um, comes from Sanguine Health Center. Sanguine Health Center was founded in response to a community need. Um, through his work at the Grand River Hospital, Dr. Chris Steingart, an infectious disease physician, recognized there were many people living with hepatitis C in Waterloo Region and in Guelph, Wellington, who could benefit from medical treatment and support. The Sanguine continues to provide hepatitis C testing, treatment, support, outreach, and education in both Waterloo Region and Guelph, Wellington. Their team partners with other agencies and groups whenever possible to enhance their ability to work with patients and clients who have or who, um, or who were at risk of hepatitis C. Michelle, Chris's wife, has helped facilitate this dream, making it a reality since the mid-2000s, and we are thankful to have her here today to speak about their successful IRP application. Michelle, can you, do I need to unmute you? Oh, you're good. No, oh, I'm good. And I'm just going to quick turn off my AC unit because it's a little out of the background. <laughs> there we go. Okay. First of all, I'm going <laughs> to, that picture there was very hard to find. I, I was saying to Sarah that, um, uh, I have very few pictures of Chris and myself that don't have us making faces or doing things that are inappropriate. So it took me a bit to find a picture that was good enough to share. Anyway, thank you for that introduction. Um, so a little just quick synopsis of Sanguine. Um, as uh, Sarah introduced, yes, we are a Hep C charitable hepatitis C service organization. And um, we started Sanguine in 2007 got our charitable status and have been ramping up what we do and the services that we provide in the community since. And um, one of the key things about what we do is that most of the population that we serve and that we see are what we are termed marginalized, meaning they're folks that are on the fringes of what we might call normal society. There are folks that are homeless or precariously housed, folks that have mental health issues, folks that have addiction issues. So they, they're complicated folks. Um, and the general, um, in general, they've not been treated well by um, the medical profession or in, by the community at large. Um, so we're there to help and uh, provide support, medical care, harm reduction supplies, food, clothing, um, psychosocial support, et cetera, for them. And um, part of what we do, a large part of what we do and that we're very proud of is our mobile health program. Um, we're sponsored by TELUS uh, for a part of that. And we have a very large primary care mobile health bus that is out in the community providing primary care to uh, homeless and precariously housed folks. We have a nurse practitioner, a nurse, um, uh, support individual on board peers that help as well and then we have two of our community outreach vans that are in the in the Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge area and in the Wellington Dufferin Guelph area and the vans are in the community uh, distributing food uh, clothing providing counseling support our social support coordinator Pete goes out with them our nurses go out um, and then harm reduction is a big aspect of that. So not only do we provide harm reduction supplies, which would, could be uh, clean needles or syringes, um, bowls, crack pipes, things like that, but we retrieve those things. We collect those things as well. Um, so what were we looking for when we were applying here is that we're expanding our services to enhance our needle retrieval program. We have a, a sort of a baby program we call it the wins working to improve neighborhood safety program um, and what that subset of what we do is we're out in the community uh, providing education harm reduction supplies but also collecting used or discarded needle litter um, drug use equipment etc so we have peers uh, which are people with lived experience that are out in the community collecting and retrieving safely and disposing of safely um, used harm reduction supplies. So what were we looking for with assistance for the IRP? <clears throat> um, so we 
this has been very big in the media recently, of course, with things that have been occurring with police agencies around the world and, and um, um, the need for some de-escalation uh, skills. And perhaps sometimes uh, the police are not the best call for certain scenarios. So what we are looking to do is to expand our re needle retrieval program and provide de-escalation training for businesses, governments, community organizations when they encounter individuals that are dealing with mental health issues or dealing with uh, drug addiction issues. Um, we get a lot of calls from agencies, organizations, and individuals saying, hey, I've found discarded gear. What do I do with this? Or I've noticed that there's a gentleman that's been sleeping under this bridge close to where I live. What can I do to assist that person? Um, and then we also get the very irate individuals calling, um, saying, you know, there's all this expletive stuff all over the place. Why is anybody doing anything about this? And so we want to be able to educate people and say, look, um, addiction is a medical condition. It is not a failing, a moral failing of an individual. It is uh, a medical condition that should be treated as such and with the same amount of respect as any, any other individual has or should get. Um, so to be out in the community and to approach organizations, small businesses that are dealing with folks that um, are struggling with these issues and tell, explaining to them or training them or providing them the resources to deal with these, these, these folks and the issues that they're encountering. Um, let me see, what else should I be saying here? Um, no, I could talk like forever about this. So this is something that I got to put my phone on mute. Um, I, how, about, I guess, how about you just explain what is the funding for the IRP specifically for and what yeah. is, and then we kind of understand what your future social impact investment will be, yeah. um, the business plan for that. But what was the money now used for, um, is helping you do? Yeah. Okay. So we have a gentleman, his name is uh, Sean Campbell. He uh, is helping us right now. He, he has a, uh, he's a subcontractor individual. I don't know exactly what you'd call his title, but he works with a scaled purpose or he has that organization of scaled purpose. And he specifically helps organizations, charitable organizations develop plans um, to create um, um, strategies and do uh, processes where you're interviewing organizations or individuals in the community to gather information, etc. So he's, he's our document preparation kind of guy, our background research kind of fellow. So this funding will go partially towards having him develop our um, screening tools and our interview processes, et cetera, um, to plan with businesses and organizations in the community for the de-escalation um, training and um, as well as uh, preparing a plan for expanding our needle retrieval program in our communities in Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo and Guelph area. That answer the question? Great, thank you so okay. much. Did you have anything else you wanted to share or that, I, that, I, that I'm, I'm cutting you off on? No, um, no, I mean, uh, in terms of the actual application process, um, I think you might be getting to this in a little bit. Um, the one, it's, it's not that onerous, quite honestly. It, it does sound like a lot when you say, oh, 47 or 43 questions or whatever. A lot of them are just very straightforward though. Yes, no answers. <laughs> okay, what's your charitable number? Things like that. But I think the key when you're doing the application process is to give us, of course, as much information as possible. Um, one of the key things that was asked in, in the application is, um, I'm just, I've got it on my screen. So I just wanted to make sure our organization, no, that's not it. Uh, how does your organization measure or plan to measure its social, cultural and environmental impact? So that's key. I think they really want, and maybe I'm speaking out of turn, um, but I think it is important to really highlight how you're going to be able to indicate that what program you're implementing has Ministry of Health for the programming that we provide. And so we have to do reporting. We keep tracks of statistics. Um, and then with our bus and our mobile platform, um, we keep statistics of number of people that come to visit the bus, um, what the visit was for, whether they were picking up fresh socks or whether they were picking up harm reduction supplies, um, what age range, what demographic, um, if there's any um, 
whether they came for medical service as well. So we have statistics up the wazoo that we can show in terms of our impact um, that we are having on the community as a whole. So I think it's really important to highlight that kind of thing um, because it shows the value of the program that you are launching.